Welcome back. Okay, so to review, we've gone over this index action and seen how with JavaScript, very similar to the way it's done in Ruby, in Rails, what the index action does as far as going out and grabbing all of our users in the model and then displaying them in an index action or excuse me, in an index uh, EJS file in the view, the template view. But as I was looking at this, I realized I, I needed to know more. I needed to know, okay, with this user controller, you know, in Rails, I see how we have a class user controller and it inherits from the application controller and we get all this functionality as a result. How is that actually working in sales? And sales makes things very easy to do, at least at the beginning. I think there's some kind of fundamental building blocks that you need to look at, or at least I need to look at, in terms of the lower level node code. And really to differentiate, hey, what sales doing and what, what is it bringing to the table? So I created a project for myself which was to try to emulate some of this functionality. You know, what would it take to do that, building my own web server in Node, grabbing the URL params, all of that. And it was really, really instructive and I wanna share it with y'all. So let's, uh, let's look at step one. So step one is gonna be creating an HTTP server in Node, which is really easy to do, but it, it causes you to kind of have to understand some fundamental building blocks of, of Node. And you'll notice here, I've got two ways of creating a server. One is using an anonymous function and one's using a name function. We're gonna get, we're gonna get into all that. But first, let's look at this line by line. So our first line is creating a variable, in this case, HTTP, and assigning its value to the module HTTP. And to remind you, you know, what is a module? It's a collection of JavaScript. So this HTTP is actually referencing a file, HTTP.js, and that file is part of a library that comes with Node. And by assigning to this variable, which incidentally, by convention, I'm calling it HTTP, but it, you know, you could call it foo if you wanted to. By having access now to the HTTP uh, module through the variable HTTP, we can call various methods and objects that are within this file. And I think it's important kind of to de demystify the process. Let's go look at, just for a second, HTTP.js. So I'm on the Node GitHub repository, and as you can see in this library folder, lo and behold, there is an HTTP.js um, file. And that's what we're requiring within our own code. And not to get just completely nerdy, this is what it looks like. And we're gonna actually look in code and see how our code, at least from the standpoint of the server creation, what's happening. So let's go back to the code. So with the HTTP variable, we can get access to create server. And this create server method, well, wait a minute, there's arguments being passed to this method. Wow, the argument's a function. How in the world can we pass a function as an argument to another method? Well, JavaScript, in JavaScript you can, and it's a very, very often used pattern, you're gonna see it you know, over and over and over again. And after you use it a while, it will become more familiar. In this case, it's an anonymous function that we're passing as an argument. So, you know, from here to here, this is the argument that we're passing to create server. But why are we doing that? Well, within create server, we're passing what's called uh, an event listener as that we're, or actually we're creating an event listener that 
within this function. And the function is actually the callback that's the result of when the event, in this case a request. So when the server starts, and you know what, let's actually look at this without an argument first. So I'm going to go back to the code and we could do this with either version, either the named version, the named function here that we're passing into create server or the anonymous function. I'm just going to take that out. So now we're left with this create server method with no arguments. And it's not going to do much. So to start, I'm going to type node server, which is for that server.js file. And you can see here that we've got a server running on 1337. But nothing's going to come back. And that's because within our code, we don't have, we haven't passed anything to the event listener to say, hey, when this event happens, I want you to do something. And that's what we're going to write next. There's a thing called an event loop that Node is using. And there's an event queue. Uh, let's see if I can spell here. So in this event loop, when we create the server, their server is has a listener and it's saying, have we gotten a request yet? You know, have we gotten a request yet? Have we gotten a request yet? And when we do get a request, then I want you to fire off another vocabulary word, this callback, which is an anonymous function. I want you to fire off this callback and initiate this code, which uses these two variables, which is request or stand for request and response. So the request object is going to give us lots of information about what was requested from our server. And the response is what we decide to respond with as a result of that request. Now, the somewhat nerdy part of this. Let's go back to GitHub for a second. What's going on with create server? So if I look at this, I just did a search for create server. And don't pay attention to exports.createServer. We're gonna actually create our own module in a little bit. But this create server is passing or has as an argument it's a request listener hey, that's our anonymous function. That's what's being passed as a request or as a request listener. And registering our anonymous function as a callback should, you know, on request or should a request be made to the server. So it creates a new server. And if you come up here, this is where the server's created. Again, it's, we're passing that function along this chain and then way down here I can find it let's see so around line 2017 what's happening is when the event happens which means when there's been a request to the server node is going to emit right here and pass back or run our callback. And it's going to pass request and response that we've given it. OK, that's the last time I'm going to go into the actual node file. But I, I wanted at least one example where you can kind of see node working at a low level up close. All right, let's go back to the code. So we have this anonymous function that we passed to create server. It's registered an event listener. And in this event loop, when we when the server gets a request, it's going to issue a callback. And our callback is this function. And that is going to utilize this response variable. And we're going to respond back to whoever requested this with, in the heading, uh, a 200 with a content type of text 
plane and then we're going to print out when we end this response we're going to print out to the browser or whatever makes the request hello world now we can do that in in a more verbose way and i'm going to take a look at that right now and that more verbose way is to have a named function here. So same code, or at least same functionality, but instead of passing it as an anonymous function, I'm gonna be more verbose and say, here's the name of that function, and we're gonna write that function out right here. Sometimes, you know, at the very beginning of learning something, the more verbose way is, is just better. So again, let's go back to the code so we have two files here they both do essentially the same thing one in the verbose way which is a named function and one as an anonymous function and i'm going to go ahead and rerun or restart our server and let's go back to it and this time when we make a request, we're gonna get back, hello world. Okay, in the next section, we're gonna take this a little bit further and beyond you know, creating the server, and we're gonna actually look at, if we put in a URL path, how we can capture that. So I'll see you at the next video.